Well, hello there and welcome. No guitar in my hands this time. I want to do some videos about uh, a wide range of uh, topics that sort of all fit under the category of human potential or personal development or uh, self-improvement maybe. And maybe some stuff about, you know, the broader societal issues too. But what prompted this was uh, over the last year, I've seen some really marvelous changes in my own life. And I want to share some of that story and also uh, connect with other people who, you know, are either working on themselves or who are interested in, in making, uh, making things better, making improvements in their lives and see what we can learn from each other. So uh, I'd like to start with what I found to be a really powerful tool for personal growth. And that is uh, the stick of cards right here. Uh, this is a tarot deck. And it may seem like an odd place to start, uh, but the reason I'm starting with it is because it was really where my journey started as far as the improvements that have happened in my life for the past year. Um, it's, it's not just the, that the, uh, the, the tarot has changed my life. I think it's more accurate to say that it saved my life. Again, that may seem like an odd thing to say and may seem preposterous to some, to some of my friends that are skeptics. Uh, I would just ask that you uh, defer judgment until you kind of hear the story here. Uh, suffice it to say that there, there's nothing that I'm doing with these cards that, uh, that I think is in conflict with reason or with uh, the, the best science that we have at the moment. And also to my friends who are, are Christians or are part of another faith tradition that maybe frowns on things like the tarot. Um, again, I'm a, a devout Roman Catholic Christian and uh, have studied the scriptures, studied my conscience, studied what our church teaches about such things. And I'm at peace that there's no conflict between the way that I'm using these cards and being a faithful uh, Christian as well. May get into some uh, like tarot apologetics at some point down the line or in some blog posts or something, but I'm not going to do that tonight. Just suffice it to say, if you could kind of delay or defer judgment for now, that would be uh, awesome. And if you've got questions or challenges, please feel free, uh, you know, to, to comment and send me those and, and uh, be happy to chat with you about them. So what I'd like to do, if it's all right, is just sort of describe where I was a year ago uh, and where I am today, some of the changes that have happened in my life and sort of the tarot's role in that and how I got involved in, in playing with a silly deck of cards to begin with. Uh, and, and then maybe offer some tips uh, to people who are interested in, in starting the same sort of journey and kind of don't know where to start. So January 2019, a year ago, here is the sort of general broad sweeps of my state of being at the time. I was uh, 70 pounds, 80 pounds, maybe 90 pounds overweight, uh, 61 years old, uh, was in constant pain. Wasn't always acute pain, but it was constant daily pain pain, joints, back, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff. And it would have been an odd day or rare day when I didn't uh, take multiple doses of at least some kind of over-the-counter medication for that Tylenol, Aleve, that sort of thing. And sometimes had to resort to prescription painkillers as well, just to, just to deal with, you know, the activities of daily life and just to kind of get through the day. And I thought that was normal for somebody my age. Uh, my blood pressure was high. It wasn't like dramatically life-threateningly high, but it was high. And I was on medication for it. I'd been on medication for over a decade. Uh, and it still was higher than it should have been. Uh, and then again, I thought that was just normal for people my age. Um, I was um, battled 
depression uh, pretty constantly. And actually from the time I was a child, uh, I didn't know what it was until, you know, a little bit later in life. Uh, but I could kind of look forward to every few weeks, every couple months, having an episode that was sometimes just miserable and sometimes kind of crippling. Didn't want to be around anybody. I'm sure that I was, uh, was not easy to be around, uh, you know, and, and uh, it wasn't pleasant a lot of times for the people that were closest to me and that I love the most. Uh, and again, I thought that that was just the way my life was going to be. I've always been that way. Uh, you know, the best that I could do was sort of learn to spot the signs of when an episode was coming on and uh, recognize it and go, okay, this is going to be not fun for three or four days and then it'll get better. Don't do anything stupid in the meantime. And I managed that, you know, and I thought that was about as, as good as it was going to get. Uh, I was a daily heavy drinker for four decades. Um, and it was just part of who I was. Uh, my routine was at the end of the workday, get out my martini shaker, shake a double martini, drink that, have another one, uh, and then start drinking glass after glass of wine until it was time to go to bed. And some days throw in, you know, some whiskey and water, that sort of thing. Probably if you saw me, it would be rare the occasions that you go, oh, that guy's had something to drink, uh, you know, and uh, I was a very high functioning drunk, I guess is the best way to say it. But again, I'm sure that it was not always pleasant to be around me and especially the people that are closest to me and, and that I love the most. Um, and really, I just was waiting to die. Uh, it wasn't wanting to die, wasn't hoping to die, wasn't thinking that death was imminent or anything like that, but uh, figured that I had maybe another five or 10 years left and that during that time period, I was going to feel worse all the time. And sooner or later, I was going to have a stroke or a heart attack or something uh, that would uh, continue to make things worse and that I was just going to get fatter and, and sicker and more miserable uh, for the five or 10 years that I had left and then I would be done and that I was done learning and that I was done doing things uh, and just sort of, you know, waiting to die. It's not that I, uh, that there wasn't joy in my life as well and that there wasn't, you know, fun or good times or love or any of that kind of stuff because there was. It's just that the broad sweeps were just, you know, this background of, of pain and, and misery and and illness and declining health and all of that. And I thought this was normal. Uh, I thought uh, that it was just a natural kind of part of the aging process uh, and that, you know, some people got there quicker than others, but that it was, you know, that's kind of what you can expect. And, uh, and in fact, I was proud uh, that I was holding up as well as I was. Uh, you know, hey, I'm still hanging in there, you know, with all of this stuff. Um, tried some things at different times, tried, you know, exercise programs and tried, you know, other things kind of half-heartedly at times to, to make things better. Maybe would lose a couple pounds. Weight was my main concern probably because uh, it was the most obvious thing. Uh, and I thought, well, if I saw that, it would solve a lot of other things. But, it, you know, I would lose a couple pounds and then gain it back and then it'd be like, okay, well that didn't work. And so I really had given up any uh, hope that things could get better. Uh, and I was more or less okay with that most of the time. So uh, fast forward to now a year later here, January, 2020, uh, I've lost 50 pounds so far. Um, and I really didn't have to do anything. That's the odd part of it. Uh, I mean, I obviously have made some dramatic changes in my diet and things like that, but I didn't have to give anything up. It wasn't strenuous. I didn't go out and join a, uh, 
gym or anything like that. Uh, but so far, 50 pounds down and still steadily losing it. Uh, off blood pressure meds and my blood pressure is, is lower than it was when I was taking the meds. And it's, you know, in good, good normal range now. Uh, my relationships are much, much, much improved. And I spend more time uh, making sure that those are good than I used to. They're a priority to me now. And they were kind of lost in the background some of the time. I sort of like just, you know, automatic. You go through life. Um, but much better there. Uh, at the end of the day now, instead of going to my martini shaker, I'm going to brew uh, a cup of tea and go meditate. And that's my daily routine now. Um, let's see what else. Oh, the, the, I'm no longer like waiting for the next shoe to drop the next episode of, uh, lower back issues or the next episode of depression or something. There are still days, you know, things are you know, sadness or difficulty or whatever. We live in a world where there's sadness and difficulty, but it's not like my life story now. It's not like, yeah, that figures, you know, that's the way it's always going to be. And the main thing is that I now have hope. Uh, I intend to get better for the rest of my days here on this earth. If I live to be a hundred and I hope I do, I want to be living during that time. I want to be accomplishing things. I want to be learning new things. I want to be making a difference in the lives of the people around me. And I have hope uh, that that's possible now and that, it, and that it is that you don't have to just be miserable and, and get worse all the time and then die. That things can actually get better. And I do feel easily 10 years younger uh, now than I did a year ago. And what started this change was uh, the tarot, and it was not intentional. It was a, a, just the silliest thing in the world. So I, I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, and then, you know, how, how it changed me and uh, sort of how, you know, some ideas on how you might uh, take it up if, if it's something you're interested in. So 2004, I bought this book. Oh, goodness. Should end my props in order. This book, Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning and a, a, a writer deck. And I don't even know why I did it at the time. Uh, I've always been interested in, you know, kind of odd things. And I don't know if somebody mentioned it to me or what made me curious, but I, I got those. And I got them home and, and uh, kind of cracked them open and, you know, read a little bit, looked at the cards a little bit. And then the book went on a shelf and the cards went in a box in the back of the closet with other things that I was going to get to eventually. They just didn't hold my interest at the time. And I don't know why that was, but, uh, you know, maybe, I guess the timing maybe just wasn't right. Um, so that's 2004. And I largely forgot about them. And I didn't know anything about the tarot before that, except kind of the stereotypes that we have for movies and stuff, you know, like the, the gypsy at the, uh, edge of town, you know, telling people's fortunes or whatever. Um, so I just left it be. And uh, in 2018, for my daughter's birthday, I got her the uh, the new Panic at the Disco album. And she loved that album. She started, you know, playing it all the time. And she was playing it for me and playing it for uh, her mom. And, and we all went to, to see Brendan Urie in concert. It was a great concert. You know, we, we liked the music too after she played it for us. And there's a song on that album called Dying in LA. And one of the lyrics is, you looked at death in a tarot card and you saw what you had to do. And one day, probably about a year ago, we were listening to that record. And I said, hey, kid, have you ever seen a tarot deck? And she hadn't. Uh, and so uh, I said, you know, I think I've got one somewhere. I'll, I'll get it out so you can see what it's like. So I dug into the back of the 
closet in the box where that stuff was. And sure enough, it was still there. And so I got that in the book and took to show her, Hey, here, you know, here it is. And she was like, Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you know, so she didn't really show any interest uh, in it to amount to anything, but I was intrigued at that point. And it was like, you know, maybe there's something I missed the first time around. I'm going to read a little bit about this, you know, just, just for fun. And so I started to read the book uh, and decided, you know, I think I'm going to start drawing a card a day. One of the things that Joan Bunning recommends to learn the, the deck is draw a card a day, and learn about that card, blah, blah, blah. And so I started doing that. No, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to change myself. I wasn't trying to improve myself. I wasn't looking for anything. It was just, I was curious and it seemed like a fun thing to do. Uh, and that was it. And I wasn't trying to change anything because I didn't think that anything could be changed. Uh, really, I thought that I was just living, you know, kind of the normal life for a guy my age. Um, so I started drawing a card a day. And I remember posting something on Facebook the first time I, I did it. And my friend Lynn, who is a very skilled, just wonderful person, skilled professional counselor, uh, posted uh, something along the lines of let us know how it goes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff to hold your interest uh, with the tarot and it may take you on a journey. And I thought, okay, well, whatever. And it turns out that's exactly what happened. Uh, it, it gave me prompts to begin looking at stuff in my life from a different point of view and thinking about it. And, uh, it led me kind of from one thing to another, a, a lot of self-discovery. I mean, I was stressed. I was angry. I don't think that people who knew me, most of them would say, oh, well, there's a guy that's walking around filled with range, with rage or range. Uh, but I was, you know, I was angry a lot of time. That manifested like, a, a, you know, yelling in traffic or, you know, whatever like that. But uh, I was angry. A lot of times and a lot of the stuff that I was doing the alcohol consumption and stuff was to kind of numb all of that down and when I quit drinking that's something that I had to reckon with because uh, I wasn't numbing all that anymore and it's like where, where did this come from but it was really the tarot the, the practice of that every day that that brought me to th that sort of awareness of what was going on in my life and uh, along the way it brought me to decisions uh, to, you know, to make little incremental changes that, you know, ultimately amounted to big changes uh, over the, the course of uh, really just a few months at the beginning. And it also led me to other resources uh, as I was discovering things about myself and finding things that I needed to, to, to work on. Somehow it had an uncanny way of of uh, helping me find those things, dredging things up that were maybe even from childhood and stuff uh, that, uh, you know, I was just utterly unaware uh, that, that there was even any impact on my life. Uh, so it was a complete accident <laughs> that I got involved with this stuff. But I really got the bug too. I got early on, got, you know, was curious at first and then was fascinated and then was obsessed and was, you know, reading everything I could get my hands on and visiting all kinds of websites and, and that kind of stuff. And so here we are a year later and a lot of other tools came along, uh, you know, to help me on this journey, but it was really the tarot that, that started it all. Um, February 16th was when I drew the first card, by the way. Um, so a little bit about, and I can give specific examples at some point too of, you know, moments that were either major or minor where I had some insights that were helpful. I remember I drew the death card and that's when I decided that maybe I would quit drinking. Uh, and it wasn't like, oh my God, you drew the death card. You're going to die if you don't quit drinking. It was like the death card represents an end of something that is no longer working. It's no longer necessary. It's no longer serving you or can represent that. 
and I drew that card and the timing just happened to be so that I was thinking about this stuff anyway. It was like, I wonder what would happen if I just didn't drink anymore. Uh, and so it's like, well, let's find out. Uh, simple as that, but I wouldn't, that, I would have never taken that step had I not been doing this daily practice. So you're interested in this. Here is what I would recommend. And I've got a, a post up on nobi.net that's N O E B I E.net about this as well. I'll link to it, uh, in, in comments at some point here. Uh, but I'll give you sort of the quick kind of condensed version if you're interested in, in learning about these cards uh, on how to do it. So I would would start for a first deck with uh, with this uh, this rider deck. Right, let me get in front of the camera. Uh, for several reasons, and there are, there are hundreds, probably thousands of, of varieties of decks out there, and you could probably start with any of them. But what is great about the rider deck is that the the images on the cards are evocative. Here's the fool card. Here's the magician. Uh, they are. Let me find the hermit real quick to show you. That's one of my favorite cards. The images are evocative and they help you make associations and um, sort of get into your intuition and what's going on a lot easier than, than a lot of the other cards out there. There's the Hermit. I don't know how well you can see that, but that's I just love that card. Uh, they help spark things for some reason. Uh, at least they did for me. Uh, and, and some other decks are maybe not quite as rich in imagery and all of that. Also, there are a lot of resources, lots of things been written about uh, the, the writer. It, it's actually usually called the writer weight smith uh, cards. Uh, it, you know, so there's just a lot of resources out there. Uh, a lot of books are written sort of with that particular deck in mind. And so uh, it, it's helpful to be able to associate what you're reading with the images and all of that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, so you can't go wrong with that. And you can probably pick one up for, I don't know, 15 bucks, maybe 10 bucks if you look. Um, so good deck to start with unless there's something else that you're really drawn to. And then later on, if you really get into it, you may want to look at some other decks, you know, and see what's out there. And there's, there's something for everybody with those. Uh, I would get either get uh, this this book uh, from Joan Bunning or go to her website, which is learntarot.com, and use it to learn a little bit about the cards. Uh, lessons one, two, three, and five. If you want to do four, you can as well. Though it talks about uh, card spreads, but really, if you if you uh, look at chapters one, two, and three, and it's all free online. Uh, that will give you the history of the cards and kind of how, how they came about, uh, just a lot of information. And then, uh, chapter five talks about this kind of daily, you know, daily card draw practice and describes it in detail. So I would, I'd take a look at those and start drawing a card a day. Um, Ritual is sort of important, and I'm a little hesitant to use that word because of the connotations, but some sort of uh, routine that you get into as you're doing this is helpful. It's helpful to, to do your card draw at the same time or approximately the same time every day, uh, in the same place every day, uh, and to go through sort of a, a little tick list of things that you, that you do uh, prior to drawing the card, uh, just because it gets you into that mindset of, okay, this is a special time. This is different. This is set apart from the rest of the day. This in the same way that you, that you would maybe have, uh, your, your morning devotions or, uh, you know, morning prayers or something like that, uh, or meditation, something that, that sets that time apart as, as special and that you look forward to, uh, 
uh, and can help you develop a, a habit of doing it every day. And I was really uh, elaborate about this when I first started. I would light incense and maybe put on some soft music and you know make a big production out of it. And I don't do that so much anymore, but I still do have a certain routine that I use every day. And I think that's helpful. I think it gets you in the right frame of mind to sort of be introspective and, and get the most out of the process. So uh, go through the process that Joan Bunning describes as far as, you know, shuffling and, and cutting the cards. And then once you draw a card, really look at the card. I would do that first before I look at, at what is in the, the book or on the website or in the little white book that comes uh, of, of descriptions of the cards uh, that come with cards. Uh, see what you can see. Look at the detail of the cards. See if it says anything to you. See if it, it reminds you of something, jars a memory from your life or relates to something that's going on in your life. You know, what are the, what are the, what is the character doing? Uh, you know, kind of what you can take from the card. And then also look up after that, the traditional meanings. You, th there are all kinds of websites out there uh, for those. If you Google for any card, like if you Google, Google for uh, Two of Cups, you'll get a whole list of, you know, websites that, you know, kind of have meanings. And they, and they vary from place to place. Uh, but the, or look at the little white book. Those, those are all helpful too, to kind of give you some, some ideas uh, that if things are not occurring to you or in addition to, you know, what's occurring to you. And then uh, just jot down some things about it. Uh, you know, I kept an, an Evernote for my journal and I would have the date and day of the week, the name of the card. And then sometimes it was just keywords. You know, sometimes it was just, you know, phrases that related to the card. Or sometimes it was sentences, or sometimes it was a longer narrative about something that was either going on in my life or a memory that I had uh, and how the card related to that. And it was just, just really, really helpful. I'd say, you know, do that and see where it takes you. Uh, you know, and it may, it may not take you anywhere. It may not hold your interest in it, or it may end up just being a cool hobby, you know, something that's, uh, interesting, uh, uh, party conversation or something. Uh, but it may actually, as, as Lynn suggested to me, take you on a journey. It certainly did, uh, in, in my case. I don't know what we'll talk about next time, and I don't know for sure when I'll even do another one of these. Uh, questions, comments, feel free to, to post here uh, in this thread on Facebook or email me. My email is N-O-E-B-I-E, -E, noby, at gmail.com. Like I said, I'll be posting things uh, about uh, these topics at noby.net on the web, and I'll post links uh, to, to that uh, here in this Facebook thread, uh, you know, once once we're, we're offline as well. Uh, but I'd love to hear back from you. And if you, you know, have started with the the tarot, or if you are if you have questions about it, uh, challenges uh, to anything that I've said here, uh, you know, I'd love to hear your experience more than anything else. I think that's all for now. I'll leave you with a, a favorite quote from David Bowie uh, that is an inspiration to me. Uh, Aging is an extraordinary process whereby you become the person you always should have been. And I think that's an aspiration. That's what I would, would like for myself here on out. And I, I wish that for all of you as well. Thanks for, uh, for popping on and joining me here. And uh, we'll see you around.